Hello everyone, how's it going? Elliot here again. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a console. It's kind of an emulation device as opposed to a console because it doesn't play cartridges. Um, but we're going to be looking at a console from Russia. This is called the Ritmix RZX50. And now this is definitely not something that I have ever, ever heard of before. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and have a look at it. So the seller I bought this from listed it for, I think, £35, um, and I sent him an offer for £27.50, uh, and he actually came back and accepted it, and he didn't actually allow offers, I just sent him a private message. Um, I also had a £2.50 uh, code to use, so I ended up paying £25 sorry, for this, so I'm pretty happy with that. The box is really, really tattered, um, although it is it was actually described as a brand new console, um, and that does make sense when you look at the condition of it inside, but there's a couple of things on the outside, I'm not really gonna be able to read it though. MP3 player, some sort of audio app, um, video and ebook, although obviously no one's really a fan of the ebooks. 4.3 inch LCD with a resolution of 480 by 272, and then it says CPS1, CPS2, Neo Geo, GBA, uh, Super Famicom, Mega Drive, Famicom, Game Boy Color, Sega Master System, Game Gear, and Game Boy, and it supports formats of MP3, blah, 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 and none of this is really too important. Let's not waffle on for any longer and have a look at what's inside. It comes with a charger, although this isn't the one for me, so it's not gonna be too much use, but um, it just runs off of a mini USB um, charging cable, so that's nice, and it's also got a very, very long AV cable to, um, which just comes out of a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, so all good things. Then we come across to the little carrying case. Now this thing is actually very, very nice and I keep all of my consoles in um, hard neoprene cases just like this. Inside it has a little um, carabiner. There's also some uh, a little kind of slot there that's probably for cables um, and also some slots there for potentially SD cards or something like that. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this was like a rebranded PSP carrying case or something. Here is the console itself. And go ahead and chuck all of this to the side. Now, I was incredibly surprised by the quality of this thing when I actually first looked at it. Um, it still has the screen um, protector on it, so that's very, very nice. Um, unfortunately, the plastic is coated in that rubber that um, kind of over a period of time kind of goes off almost. And um, luckily it's not gotten to that stage yet, but it's an inevitability of this um, plastic coating. And I imagine if you try and pick one of these up, then you might actually have uh, that problem, which uh, it's not very nice, it's really nasty, and you can't do anything about it or wipe it off. So if you're gonna be buying one of these devices, there's a crucial part of emulation, um, and that is the actual functionality of the device you're playing it on. A lot of people say, oh, why do you bother with emulators when you can play on your phone? Some people like physical buttons, and I'm definitely one of those people. So there is a little joystick, although I'm gonna be honest with you, it's super kind of gritty to push. Um, it's quite resistive. Um, when, I, when I slide it around, I'm, not, I'm, I'm having to kind of really work to move it around. It's not an easy nub to be using. Um, there are probably games where it will really benefit um, from that, but it automatically maps to uh, the D-pad. Uh, so if you're not using the, um, the joystick, of course, you can just regularly use the D-pad. Now moving on to the D-pad, this console is at a slight slant here, I guess for kind of ergonomics feel and also to make it feel a little bit thinner. Um, unfortunately, although it does make it feel thinner, um, you can definitely feel that there is a somewhat, it feels like a bigger drop on this side um, because obviously the button moves um, at the same, the same depth on each one. This one almost recesses beneath the top of the plastic, whereas this one uh, fully pressed is still um, kind of protruding. So. It's not the most ideal setup, but I have felt worse D-pads. Um, over on this side, the A and B and X and Y buttons are pretty poor. There is a lot of travel um, in them, and because of that kind of clicky feel, uh, you really have to kind of press it down quite. It's just an odd sensation. It's not a nice, soft feel. It's got like a, 
a kind of resistance to it again, which some people might be behind, but I'm not a massive a fan of it. Start and select, there's no problems with those at all. You're not gonna be using them much, but they're just micro switched, as are the L and R buttons. They're just uh, micro switched as well. So let's go ahead and have a look at the gameplay then. Now I should mention I had this on charge before and I've just uh, reshot this clip because um, it somewhat froze and turned off. And I think that has something to do with the battery in this thing um, probably being past its sell by date um, and needing replacing. So obviously you can see here the menu is quite similar to a PSP, um, but it's definitely not copying the icons um, in the ways that we've seen some of the other things like the retro mini copy. So there's a load of settings here. Um, you've got browser for different files because obviously it has got an SD card slot on the bottom, ebook, picture, um, and other things that we don't care about. Game ROMs. Um, in here you have a wealth of different things to play, which is great. Um, we'll start off with the one that I'm probably most keen about, which is Game Boy, and have a look at this. Now this is a little bit of a problem, and we're gonna have a look um, in a couple minutes when I plug an SD card in, if this is the ROM or if this is the console. So if I press start here, you can immediately notice that that is running a bit too quickly. And it's also seemed to kind of load this corner in um, in a slightly messed up way, which is not ideal. If we press these two buttons, we can go into game config. And what we can do is things like turn the full screen down and the painfully fast volume down. And then you can see it does play it in the 1-1 resolution. Now that looks really, really nice, but because this thing is running at a million miles an hour, it's uh, not exactly ideal. So obviously it's not gonna be very functional playing at a million miles an hour, but I'm not sure if that's the ROM or if it is the uh, emulation of Game Boy. So what we can do is go back to the Game Boy one in a couple minutes when I put one uh, an SD card in with a Game Boy ROM on it, and we'll see if it's a poorly loaded ROM or if it is uh, the actual emulation of Game Boy, which is a bit of a deal breaker for me. Game Gear, let's have a look at Sonic the Hedgehog. That is the go-to Game Gear test game. Okay, and there we go. I mean, that's not running too terribly bad. Let's put it back up into the full screen because obviously it's not the easiest thing to see and um, I'm not very familiar with this menu yet, so please bear with me. Right, continue. There we go. That is a little bit squashed up and it's got that fast noise again. So uh, again, we'll come back to the Game Gear 1 in a little bit and test if it's the emulation or if it's the ROM. If we're gonna uh, have the same across the board, all of the games speeding up, then that's not gonna be too great. Oh no, that's Sega Master System. Okay, we don't really care about that one. Game Boy Color. Um, you would have noticed as well, which is quite nice, is that there's actually, um, I'm not sure what that one is, but let's have a look at this one. There is actually save states for this. So if you do actually plan on playing this, um, you know, properly, properly, um, oh God, I think I've just chosen some sort of RPG thing, then you can actually load and um, save your game, which is very, very useful, and obviously something that we're all gonna be um, asking in the description, in the comments section below, if it plays and saves games. So yes, if you're buying this to play Pokemon, you can save, although obviously what we want is for it to, uh, to be a bit smoother, because at the moment, it's a bit of a disaster. Right, this is some sort of a cutscene going on, and you can probably tell on the screen that actually that looks very, very nice. You know, Game Boy Color are probably predominantly going to be what we're playing on here. Um, obviously, Pokemon and, and all that kind of stuff is um, Game Boy Color. So yeah, this looks very, very nice, and the buttons are working well, although the D-pad um, has potentially a little bit of latency. The joystick actually less so, but um, yeah, right, what do I have to do here? I can't read any of these things. We'll load some actual good uh, ROMs onto here in a second, but that I'm very impressed with. No screen tearing there at all. Can you see how smooth that is as I move that across? That is gorgeous. I guess we can have a look at how the save state works. So let's um, just save that there and go back out of there. It looks like it's put it in there. And if we click exit and load back into it, And we click load save state. We want load, and there we go, perfect. Okay, that is exceptional. Very, very happy with that. I'm gonna have a quick look at the Mega Drive stuff. Um, it's very important to note that um, I'm not an expert with this device. This is just my kind of first hand look at this thing. So um, if you would like to keep up to date on this, then go ahead and join my Facebook page and uh, ask me some questions in there if you wanna find out um, anything else about this. So links are in the description for that. And uh, let's have a look at Mega Drive Batman. 
This seems to be looking great. Granted, I'm very bad at this game and I can't work out how to jump. There we go, B and directional button. This looks absolutely excellent. I'm honestly kind of surprised at how good this looks. We've got to race through these though a little bit more. So this is the Super Famicom um, or SNES, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System for people um, in the US and SNES for people in um, America, oh, sorry, in the UK. Oh, okay, so definitely a little bit of lag on that one. But again, this could be a poor ROM. Um, or not actually, I'm not sure. I definitely haven't played this game before, so I'm not entirely sure. Actually, no, this seems to be playing okay. I think it's just the uh, animations being a little bit choppy, but that seems to work all right. I'm very, very impressed with this so far, and all I really want to use this for is my Game Boy Advance titles. So let's have a look and see how well these play. I'm saving Private Ryan stuff going on here. Come on. Oh no. Okay, a little bit of um, lag there, I think, when uh, I jumped into the bomb. Oh, there's the bad guy. Or is that the good guy? No, that's the bad guy. Oh, I'm shooting up in the air, that's not very good. So, oh, L and R do work, that's very, very nice. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable to say that that, that works very, very nicely. Um, obviously, you can save it as well there, which is nice. Hooray! Okay, Game Boy Color works nicely. Right, Neo Geo. Now, that might be an important one for some of you guys. So, let's have a look at one of the Neo Geo games. Very, very, very nice. And I didn't notice any lag on this before. Now, you might want to use the joystick for this one so that you can have a little bit of uh, authenticity. A little bit of lag there, maybe, whilst there's quite a few things going on on the screen. Um, lots of things flying around, but it's going to be fine to have. It's going to be hard to find any emulator which doesn't do that. Um, and again, could be the ROM. So what I would like to do is show you um, a Game Boy ROM from the Odroid, which is a pretty popular emulation device for Game Boy games right now. And what we'll do is we'll put the same game into the um, the Rip Mix thing and see which one plays it better. So this is the Odroid Go, a very nice thin device, high quality. The only thing that really lets it down is the screen tear. Now there are a couple of updates to fix that, but unfortunately the power in this thing isn't gonna be able to cater for a perfect emulation. And then um, let's have a look at Link's Awakening open. That is running very fast. It seems to have some sort of a speed issue. And then when it's not having a speed issue, it has like a sound issue. Because yeah, that's definitely not right. Ah, uh, this is gonna be a big deal breaker for me. Is that just because the volume doesn't sound good at um, that level, if we turn it back up again. Goodness me. And now it doesn't seem to be playing. Oh no, it's been, has it been flawed? Oh, it's difficult to say, because it could be something that I've done wrong. Oh no, I, I have a feeling that this is, this has just been massively flawed. Look, it's pressing that down key right now. Because that actually has worked. That is actually looking very, very nice. Now, I'm not sure if that is something to do with this ROM or if this is now a fault that I've just given this thing from the short amount of time that I've been playing it. No, it looks like I've actually somehow managed to break the, uh, the down button. What has happened here? Oh no, well this thing has just been somewhat flawed. Okay, well, there we go then. Um, I'd have to say, in conjunction with the fact that the battery on this lasted literally five minutes before crashing the thing and then um, turning off, I would say that this thing has a few quality problems. Now, obviously, it has that issue where it's just permanently going uh, down and pressing the down button, and um, it did kind of freeze, um, obviously, a couple of times. So, 
Hmm, I don't know what to say about this thing now. It was really, really promising at one point and it could just be that I've got a faulty unit um, and it's not a retail thing that you can go out and buy now anyway, unless you maybe you live in Russia. Um, but there we go. I thought it'd be interesting to have a look at a console um, emulation device that we haven't seen before on the market and um, certainly has been quite interesting. Some of the games work very well, others didn't work well at all. Some things were super promising and then immediately shut down by other things. So let me know what you think. Definitely an interesting little bit of kit for 25 quid. If you did enjoy the video, please let me know by leaving a like and let me know something in the comments of what you think about this or the video. And uh, I will catch you in the next video. Peace.